I have had my hosting with WPX hosting for a little while, but I just recently had to switch and I want to talk about where I went to, why I had to move and go from there. WPX Hosting is a really solid web host, actually, and it's one that I've been recommending for a little while, basically ever since I personally switched over to them. However, I have just recently had to make the decision to leave WPX Hosting and take my business elsewhere, and I want to explain why that is, because this is going to be an important consideration for other people, uh, and not only that, uh, where I went uh, is probably something you may want to check out if you want to get a lot more more server horsepower for a lot less money okay and so first of all let's talk about WPX hosting um, WPX hosting is a really good web host I've got nothing bad to say about them uh, I did just recently make a video where I was kind of harping on their rebranding and I think that their site is really ugly and the control panels not that great but that has nothing to do with why I moved a, a, a web host like WPS hosting that offers managed WordPress and they talk about the site speed, a big way that they do that is to really, really aggressive caching, okay? And that caching basically is a thing that will speed up the front end of your website um, quite a bit, okay? And so really a, one of the major things that go into making any WordPress site work really snappy on the front end is having a lot of caching in place and having the server optimized for that purpose. And WPX Hosting does a really fine job at that. And so it is legitimately one of the fastest hosts out there, but it totally relies on a lot of aggressive caching in order to do that. Okay. Now the thing is, if you're running the type of website where you cannot cache it like that, well then you, what's happening is that you're using the web host and you're basically using it raw. Like you don't have any of those layers on there that's going to give it the speed. Basically with all the caching layers and the various speed things that they do to speed up the site, it's kind of like putting a bandaid over it. Okay. And so what you may have is a web hosting situation that's actually not all that powerful, but you're sort of covering it up with a whole lot of caching. And a a lot of the WordPress hosts work that way, whether it's WP Engine, uh, Flywheel, I mean, a lot of them work this way, and WPX Hosting is definitely one of them. Now, I have a membership site uh, at the Blog Marketing Academy, and it's called The Lab. Now, a membership site is a very different type of beast. A lot of times you are going to run a lot more plugins than normal in order to make all the different functionalities work. And not only that, the big thing is that uh, it, the site needs to look and act differently for every single person based on who they are because you need to log into the lab and it's got to be a completely dynamic experience because it shows different things to different members, all right? And so for that reason, when you're running a site like that or any, any kind of an app experience that you're using on top of WordPress, you can't put all the caching layers on there. It won't work right, okay? And so with that being said, what was happening with the lab is that because I could not use all those caching layers that WPX Hosting provides, um, I was just running WPX Hosting account raw the way it would be just with server horsepower alone. And as it turns out, it's pretty weak. It's really not very strong and it couldn't keep up with it. What was going on is that when I was inside of the admin panel for WordPress and I would click on something, um, it would take 10 to 12, sometimes longer seconds for the, for the link to click over and for the screen to redraw. And it, so the control panel was just sluggish. And you can really tell the horsepower of a server based on how fast your admin panel is. Because all the caching plugins and everything are not going to help you when you're back in the back end. It's only going to help you on the front end. But even on the front end, the front end of the lab wasn't all that bad. Uh, but the back end was horrible. And, uh, and so it really comes down to it's just wasn't strong enough. Your web server is actually sort of like a, your computer, okay? Kind of like a computer like that, okay? Now, and it's, so it's got CPU horsepower and it's got um, a certain amount of memory, 
okay um, and then you also have a you know hard drive to store everything on so when you're out there looking at web hosts you're going to see uh, the things like how much disk space you get things like that now a managed WordPress host like WPX hosting is not very uh, they, they're not very upfront about how much memory you're getting or how much CPU that you are getting. Now with most shared hosts, uh, and WPX hosting is one of them, um, you're sharing resource with, resources with uh, a whole bunch of other sites at the same time. And so what's happening is that you're not getting that much uh, computer horsepower dedicated to your website. Now the way it works out with WPX hosting is that you're actually getting a really tiny amount of memory, okay? If you look at their pricing, they've got different plans. And here's the thing that I found out. The lower level plan that starts at $24.99 a month, you're only getting 128 megabytes of memory dedicated to your account which is an extremely low amount of memory. Keep these numbers in mind because when I show you where I went, I'm gonna show you the price comparison here. Now the level of account that I was on um, at WPX is the professional account. So I was paying only $49.99 or something like that uh, per month. So it's actually you know, a good deal. I, you know, I got nothing to complain about on that. But you only get 256 megabytes with that account. Now keep in mind, that's 256 megabytes of RAM, uh, a very small amount of RAM dedicated to all of my sites at the same time on that account. Now in terms of CPU power, I know that I'm sharing it with a bunch of other websites. There's nothing dedicated to mine. Uh, as far as disk space, it tells you right then and there how much disk space that you get. Disk space was not an issue for me, but the amount of memory was because when you have a low amount of memory and then you have a website that has a lot of plugins and it's got a lot going on and it needs to remain very dynamic and it can't have all these caching layers over top of it, it's going to use a lot more memory, okay? And 256 is a pretty puny amount of memory. Now, if, if any of the nerds among us who knows how a computer works, um, you know, your, your computer is going to run faster the more memory you have. And when it's not getting enough memory for what's doing, then then CPU processes start to stack up. It can start to have to write things to the hard drive temporarily and stuff like that. And it just really bottlenecks the hell out of it. And so WPX hosting and a lot of hosts are very similar to this. Um, they give you a very small amount of server power. And then they absolutely rely on all the caching layers and stuff that they built in order to make it seem fast. But because I couldn't use those things, it was really apparent and obvious just how slow and weak that little hosting account was, okay? So I had to go looking around to solve the problem. Where I ended up is actually Cloudways, okay? And I wanna to talk to you about the way Cloudways works because this is probably gonna become my new favorite web host. Um, obviously, I'm switching to it, but I wanna make a case for why, and I'll talk more about Cloudways later in a more dedicated review, but I wanna talk about why this might be something that anybody, regardless of your needs, may want to look at. Because the truth is, you just get a lot more for your money with something like this. Um, if we go back to, to WPX, I mean, A, we got this super ugly interface going on here, but if we go over to their pricing page, we've got our plans, okay? And as we mentioned, the business plan here, you're only getting 128 megs of RAM, um, and you get 10 gigs of space, and you get 100 gigs of bandwidth, okay? Now, most likely, you're not gonna go over either one of these, but if you have a really dynamic website like I do, then that 128 megs of RAM can definitely become a bottleneck, because when they they talk about all these super fast, you know, CDN, light speed, and all this. These are all the caching layers and various things that they're doing to make a, a pretty weak hosting account seem a lot faster than it really is, all right? Um, with the professional account, again, you're getting 256 megs of RAM, but you get 20 gigs of space and you get 200 gigs of uh, bandwidth um, and you get the 15 websites, blah, blah, blah. So this is the, you know a very typical setup. And if you're going and looking at other hosts, there a lot of times they're gonna cap you off on how many websites you can host, how much disk, disk space, things like that. Here's a support agent, which is actually something really, really good about WPX because they're great on the support. But let's go over to Cloudways. Um, and I wanna show you the pricing here, okay? 
Let's go down here. Now the way this works is very different because what you're doing is you're actually getting what's called a VPS, which is a virtual private server. Um, and you're getting it through one of these companies, through DigitalOcean, Linode, Vulture, uh, Amazon, or Google Cloud, okay? And so, but you don't have to go and get a VPS uh, from these guys. You're basically getting it all from Cloudway. So basically, um, a VPS is you're getting a like a virtual machine, almost like a dedicated server dedicated to your website. And the resources are not going to be shared. Like when you look at this at a, with a $10 plan with DigitalOcean, you're getting a full one gigabyte of RAM dedicated to your account. And it's not going to be shared with other people. Okay. Now that right there is a significant, that's four times the amount of memory than you get with the $50 plan from WPX hosting. That's a pretty big deal right there. You're getting one full processor core dedicated to your account. You're getting 25 gigs of, gigs of storage, whereas with WPX, you're only getting 10, okay? And this is for a lot less money. This is only $10 a month. You're getting a full one terabyte, which is probably way more than you're ever gonna need versus 100 gigabytes. So they're giving you 10 times the bandwidth for only $10 a month. Now, the way it works with a virtual private server is that all these resources are gonna to be totally dedicated to your account. You're not sharing them with somebody else, okay? If, if you have some other website that's just taking up a lot of horsepower, it, it's, it, you know, it's not going to affect your sites one way or the other, okay? Now, the, the site, the, uh, the account that I went with, and I'll talk about this later in an upcoming video, but I went with Vulture, and I went specifically with the high frequency. The high frequency VPS is a faster VPS with more CPU power, faster memory, and faster disk storage, okay? Basically, it's using a it's SSD drive, which is very typical these days, but it's using an even faster version of that that's very, very quick on the store. So it all adds up to the fact that the reason they call this high frequency is because it's a server that's designed to have a whole lot of calls happening to it all at the same time. And so when you have a dynamic website like mine that's making a lot of database queries and a lot of calls and I can't cache them, uh, a high frequency server is a really, really solid way to go. But once again, let's look at these prices and I'll tell you straight up, as of right now, it's hard to believe I'm only on a $26 a month plan. I, the fact that I can host my business on that low of amount of money right now is really something. Now, it, it, the funny thing is if I need to upgrade this to the $50 plan, I can, that would put me on equivalent with what I'm paying WPX hosting, but look what I'm going to get for that four gigs of RAM and dedicated to my account versus the puny little 256 that I've got now. I'm getting a full dual core uh, processing power dedicated to my account. I'm getting 128 gigs. It's like having a full dedicated server just to my account. But right now I'm getting along just fine with this. I've got two gigs dedicated to my account. Um, I've got one processor core, 64 gigs of storage, which is more than I've got now, way more than, I'm, than I need, and a full two terabytes of bandwidth. Now with the, it, but I have all the same capabilities that I have with WPX hosting without the nasty interface, okay? Because even though a virtual private server might sound a little nerdy, it's really not. Not when you have something like Cloudways. It's actually just as easy to use in a lot of ways. All right, so I will come in later with a full Cloudways review and I'll show you the back end and stuff like that. We'll leave that for another time. But I just simply wanted to talk about why I'm leaving WPX hosting and where I went. Now, the, I wanna leave off with this and that is that I think that this, is, this just might be where I'm actually going to recommend it all of my readers and students go. Now, if you're happy with your current host, totally fine. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a little bit of training on how to get set up on Cloudways. There are a few things that are different about it, but you have all of the same capabilities of a managed WordPress host with staging sites and free SSL, all the stuff that you would be used to with good WordPress hosting. Uh, and you've got the pricing of low-end shared hosting. Like if you go to most hosts, like SiteGround is really popular and I recommend SiteGround to a lot of people, at least I was, 
um, you know, they, they hook you with that really low monthly pricing, but then after that prepaid term, it's going to shoot up to like 15 bucks a month or something like that. And you're getting shared hosting with not a whole lot of horsepower associated with it. And you're sharing those resources with everybody else on the same server. It's not anywhere remotely the same as having a VPS dedicated to your site, okay? And even if you're just getting started and your sites are not very busy, do you realize how fast it's gonna be on even the cheapest DigitalOcean VPS that you can get with Cloudways for just $10 a month? So it's pretty cheap hosting, but yet you can run multiple sites, as many sites as you want, in fact. You're not gonna be capped on anything. You've got way more memory dedicated to your account. I mean, everything is better about it, really. Um, and so you're, it's just, you're getting so much more for your money by going toward a VPS. But a lot of people don't move toward a VPS because you know a lot of people don't even know what a VPS is. The marketing for from Bluehost and SiteGround and that kind of stuff is, is better and and so people go there not really knowing what the alternatives might be well i'm here to say that cloudways and, and a vps style host is a really solid alternative to tr tr traditional shared hosting and you're just gonna plain get a lot more for your money it's super lickety split i want to say the admin panel for the lab is now much faster i have one plugin that i need to deactivate soon that'll make it a lot faster than it is now, but it definitely sped up the admin panel quite a bit. And it's just nothing but just pure, I've got more horsepower to dedicate to the website. The weird thing is I'm now gonna cut my hosting bill in half in the process. So Cloudways is just solid as a rock and I can't wait to show you more about it a little bit later and show you the back end. For now, I'll talk to you later.